Now, we have ultra slick seals, which are specially treated seals that are extremely slippery. And uh, the, you can ask, or you can give us a call about those and we'll tell you all about them. We actually have ultra slick bushings as well. Uh, and what we do then is we take some seal grease and make sure that we pack the inside of the seal, inside of the wiper with grease. Now here's a little trick that you'll, you'll enjoy. We're going to have a little, you remember that this, this lip right here is real, real sharp? You can actually take a brand new seal and destroy it as you're installing it. So what we need to do is we need to have something that we can use to actually slip over the end of the tube. So we're going to take a plastic bag. I'm going to cut the corner off. Take the corner of the plastic bag, slip it over the end here. And we install the seals. There you go. Then the washer, there's a rounded edge and a sharp edge. The rounded edge goes on first towards the seals. The outer bushing and the inner bushing or the upper bushing. Okay, next we'll get a little bit of pre-lube, which we just have an oil can filled with ultra slick. We actually just put a little pre-lube on, pre on the tube itself into the bushing, on the bushing itself, just rub it around. And we take the tube, which is obviously spotless, and slide it on there. Now what we're going to do next is actually get a seal driver. It's two pieces. We're going to install the bushing itself. So, need you to come in tight a little bit here and take a look at this. This part, this piece, this uh, lower bushing, actually gets a slide hammered in to the fork tube itself. And it, we, we take the installation tool and actually hit on this washer and that drives it into the tube. Now I'll demonstrate. You hear the difference when it went, went home there solid? Then next goes in the seal, same tool. And then we get the clip. And just take a screwdriver and just push it in there. Nothing fancy here and you clips right into the, into the notch there. And then use the same tool again install the wiper. Okay, next we install the cartridge, which is of course spotless. Just get slid down in there. Actually line it up with your finger on the other end. Now we take the compression adjuster with the gold valve on it. A little bit of seal grease and actually just put it on the O-rings here. Allows it to slide in there without it helps the O-rings from getting nicked up. Keeps them from getting nicked up. Now we'll go ahead. I actually can pull on the end of this rod. That helps pull the cartridge back so that it actually gets a bite on that and actually tightens down. Now what I recommend here is that we use a torque wrench and make sure that it's got proper torque. Now to get proper torque, you want to check with the manual. Oop. Wrong socket. Then once that's torqued, Still have to stick our preload tube on, or there are spring tube on here with the nut. This goes down all the way to the end of the threads. Now we're ready to stick oil in it. 
Time to reach for the ultra slick. It's simply a matter of filling the fork with oil and bleeding it. Dooga 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 dooga. Grab the damping rod and bleed the cartridge. On some models, oil comes out through the center of the damping rod. Some models, it doesn't. On some models, that's a, a telltale sign that something's wrong or something's stuck down in there. On this particular model, it had better come up here. And when you pull the cartridge all the way up, and it's, you can feel the damping resistance through the entire stroke, then you know that the cartridge itself has been bled. But when it comes up to the end and then it goes like that, that means you still have some bleeding to do. Okay, now once it is completely bled, put the damping rod in all the way down. On the Showa, bottom these things out completely. Still needs a little more fluid here. Showa here. This is the rebound needle itself and then the spring so that the, the spring actually would get dropped into the tube first down the center of the damping rod. Uh, let me pull it up here. And then this piece, the, and it goes in this direction. And the rebound rod goes in. And all of this stuff should be installed before you set the oil level, because it will affect the oil level. Everything gets bottomed out completely. This shot shows the orientation of some of the rebound pieces. First, we'll look at the Showa. Uh, the spring would actually get dropped into the damping rod first then the rebound needle in this orientation. I realize that there are points at both ends of the, of the rebound needle. The end with the small point goes up and is actually used to locate the rebound adjusting rod. Now on the Kayaba, on the other hand, the rebound adjusting rod gets dropped into the shaft first, then the adjusting piece in this orientation with the holes at the bottom. Now, the big difference between Kayabas and Showas is right here. See that little hole? Big deal, right? Well, this makes a huge difference on how you have to set the oil level. On the Kayaba, no hole. I'm going to explain. Got something to show you here. I did some more drawing. Okay, imagine if you will that this blue area here, this is the outer fork tube. The black one here is the inner fork tube. Now the inside diameter of the outer tube is not the same as the outside diameter as the inner tube. Okay, these in red are the bushings and the bushings I've exaggerated it so that you can tell that there's a gap in this area here, and this is the problem area. This is where the big difference is between these two. Now with a Showa, it's got a hole in there. And so what will happen is when you've got an oil level, when you set your oil level, you know how much oil, or oil is in this area in between here. On a Kayaba, without that hole in there, you have no idea how much oil is in between those, those two spaces there. So the way to handle that On a Showa, it's no problem at all. On a Showa, we just set the oil level and it's fine. On a Kayaba, what we have to do 
is actually just take the fork tube, lift it all the way up until it stops, and then set it all the way down again. And what that does is that takes all the oil that's in between the two tubes and dumps it into the middle. Okay? So this is really, really important because what will happen otherwise on a Kayaba, um, you can set your oil level one and then check it again after pushing it up and down two or three times or riding around or take it home or sending a customer off and, and, and he gets done and he checks his oil level and it's completely different than what you say it was or one level seems to be higher than the other. And that's because of the, the space in between the two. So if you set, set it correctly uh, by lifting up the tube and dumping all the oil into the middle, it's always going to be correct. Okay, now that's the difference between Kaiba and Showa is, has a lot to do with sometimes the oil levels that we recommend are a lot higher than what, say, the factory recommends. Um, 